Well, NASA scientists and amateur astronomers alike will watch a speeding ball of rock hurtle past the Earth this Tuesday. This is the asteroid that they are so keen to study. Its catchy name is 2005 YU55. This grainy image of it was taken in April of last year. Uh, in about 10 hours, it will pass closer to our planet than the moon. And scientists have been plotting its trajectory and say even at the point of its closest approach, it will be more than 324,000 kilometers away from us. Still, that is the closest encounter the Earth has had with a space rock of this size since 1976. NASA's Space Guard program says it won't collide with Earth, at least not for the next 100 years, but it has still classified the asteroid as a, quote, potentially hazardous object. Now, why is that? Well, if it did crash into Earth, experts say it would result in a 4,000 megaton blast. And if it fell into the ocean, it could cause a 70-foot high tsunami. Now, that is a lot of damage, considering that the asteroid is roughly 400 meters wide, or the size of an aircraft carrier. Now, an event like this won't happen again until 2028, so scientists will be scanning this asteroid very closely. And starting today, the huge dishes at the Arecibo Planetary Radar Facility in Puerto Rico will start tracking the space rock. And over in Goldstone, California, the massive 70 meter deep space network antenna has been bouncing radio waves off the asteroid since Friday. Now, NASA hopes radar images will provide details about the asteroid's dimensions, shape, and surface features. Uh, Marina Brozovich is a scientist at NASA's Near Earth Object Office at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. She joins me now live from the Goldstone Observatory via Skype. Marina, very good to see you. Thank you for joining us here on Newstream. But first, I got to ask, are we 100% sure that the asteroid will not hit the Earth or the Moon? Absolutely. We are 100% sure that it's not going to hit us. Okay, good to hear. Now, you and your colleagues at NASA, you've been watching this asteroid for a few days now. What have you learned? Well, um, I hope that you have seen the images that we have released yesterday. So we already obtained uh, very high resolution images on November 6th. And then uh, we were receiving excellent, excellent images yesterday at 3.75 meter resolution. We're covering rotation of this object for a full four hours. So um, I, I, we are already having some spectacular results. And today we are going to continue. So um, everything that we knew about this object, what that we were assuming from the Arecibo images in April of 2010, turns out it, it seems to be correct. So we are looking at about 400 meter object that is rotating uh, with a period of about 18 hours. And I can tell you, so, so far what we have, what we have covered, what we have imaged, if you ima Im Im imagine that this is 12 o'clock and this is six o'clock. So on November 6th, that what we have covered is we have covered from about three o'clock to six o'clock rotation. And then on the seventh, so yesterday, we covered the, we imaged the rotation from about 10 o'clock to two o'clock. And today we are going to be seeing from about six o'clock to nine o'clock. So we are seeing a new part of the object. And what these images are showing us that we are really, uh, it is not spheroid. It's, it's not uh, that um, what we were initially seeing from those grainy images from our SIBO, that it's completely um, featureless. Features are really starting to come up because we are having much bigger, big, much larger signal to noise, and we are seeing we are having excellent resolution here at 3.75 meters at Goldstone, and wealth of surface detail are starting to come up, and this is very very interesting object. Um, we are very excited uh, to be observing it. You've been collecting some incredible images with more to come in just a few hours from now. And it's been 30 years since scientists have had a chance to study an object of this size so close to our planet. I can only imagine this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for you. So just how excited are you? Oh, we are all tremendously excited. This is um, this is really represents such a unique opportunity. And uh, keep remember, you know, in 1976, so when that asteroid flew by uh, even closer, uh, at roughly at this distance, a little bit closer, we really didn't know about it. Uh, we established that it flew by much, much later. Uh, and next time that we know that something is coming this close is going to be uh, 2028. So uh, we have a, a way to go. But, uh, but I, I just want to point out that 
uh, every couple of years, we do get a chance to um, observe something extremely interesting and put thousands of pixels on the object. And it doesn't even come. Radar is a very powerful tool. And the asteroid doesn't even have to come this close in order for us to achieve high resolution images and, and something that can be compared only to a spacecraft flyby. So, so I do hope that, that you know, uh, we, will, we will have more opportun many opportunities uh, to, to, to obtain really high resolution um, images of our cosmic neighbors. Well, Marina, thank you very much for joining us. I wish you and your colleagues the very best and do enjoy the sight when that asteroid swings by so closely to Earth. Thank you so much.